Welcome back. And I know you've all stayed tuned because I know you absolutely love it. I love it. It's time for Simon's Good News. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. There's a build-up. Now, first of all, they're calling it a once-in-a-century sighting. An Egyptian vulture has been spotted in the Isles of Scilly. The giant bird of prey, which has a distinctive bright yellow face and a mane of feathers, uh, was first seen on Monday flying over Penennis Head on St Mary's. It's then moved on to Tresco, where it was seen perching on a pine during the middle of the day. Now, it's the first time the species has been spotted in the UK in more than 150 years, and only the third time recorded. Previously, it was spotted in 1825 and 1868. It's one, you old, it's one old then. bird, isn't it? <laughs> I, think, I think it's a different one. No, no, I didn't. I'm moving on. Now, a new study has found that killer whales have complex social circles that include close friendships. Researchers have discovered that orcas spend more time interacting with certain other individual whales in their pod and tend to favour those of the same sex and similar age. The project has been led by the University of Exeter and the Centre for Whale Research, and it used these drones to film the animals in the water. Based on 651 minutes of video filmed over 10 days, the researchers were able to observe the whale's social activities and pattern of contact. Well, the lead author of, uh, from University of Exeter compared the findings to human behaviour. He said, until now, research on killer whales' social networks has relied on seeing the whales on the surface and uh, recording the whales together. But underwater, they hold equivalent gatherings to funerals. Apparently, they, they get together to honour their dead and they form close friendships just like us. Well, the researcher said, it's like when your mum takes you to a party as a kid, you don't choose the party, but you can still choose who to hang out with once you're there. Nice. I've Which I some, quite like. I've got some orca facts, actually. I know a thing or two about orcas randomly, just, or just a couple. They're one of the only species like us where the females go through menopause. They're a matriarchal society. Okay, that's interesting. And the boy orcas stay with their mums and are fed by their mums until their mums die. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh. Don't ask me why I know this stuff, I just do. Oh. Good in a pub quiz me. Now, this is a story which comes in the good... <laughs> it's in the good news section, but I warn you, you may not find it... Well, it, let me go with this. A, a good news story for one cat, but perhaps not so good for another. Because a family was shocked when the cat they believed they had cremated returned home as if nothing had happened a couple of days later. <laughs> now, Fred, Frankie is a 16-year-old tabby. He failed to return home. This was in Warrington last month. So his family launched a search for him. Now, a few days later, a dead cat was spotted on the M6 motorway that looked similar. Highways England were able to retrieve the animal and gave it to the family to be cremated. Much to the surprise of the family, Frankie returned home a few days later. And when Frankie reappeared, their son, Remy, who's just seven, said, it's a miracle. Amazing. <laughs> I've got a tabby cat. I've always had tabby. He's crying. <laughs> I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote that several hours ago and it's made me laugh all over again. <laughs> I'm, so I'm a tabby cat owner. I just keep thinking, oh, like, oh no, what, what about the one that was on the motorway? Exactly. And we mustn't forget the cat that was on the M6. Cold hearted man. Now, <laughs> a pup in Liverpool that during lockdown renamed itself the Three Bell Ends in response to the government's handling of the COVID 19 pandemic has rebranded itself again. This is the. <laughs> This is the James Atherton, which is in the New Brighton area of the city. It rebranded itself in a tongue-in-cheek dig at the Conservative Party, featuring, as you can see, Boris Johnson, Dominic Cummings and Matt Hancock with, well, bells on their heads. Now, the owner, da da <laughs> Daniel Davis, he's Careful. gone ahead and renamed the pub again after the lifting of restrictions across England was delayed. Uh, as Cummings is no longer Johnson's chief advisor, the pub is now called The Two Helmets. <laughs> This time, the sign features only Johnson and Hancock with the pair both wearing hard hats with cracks in them. I love that. Now, that is good. That's a really good story. That's a great picture, because this is a family from Edinburgh. It's become one of only a handful across the UK to have six generations alive at the same time. Here they are. Thanks to the birth last month of Nyla, the latest generation, 86-year-old Mary Marshall has become Scotland's only great-great-great-grandmother. Mother of eight, Mary, mother of eight, Mary, who was born four years before the start of World War II, boasts a whopping 90 grandchildren. The women are all on the same side of the family, all except new mum, Tony Lee, work or have worked as carers for the NHS. That is just the best photograph. Wow. Congratulations great, to them. Great, was it great, 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 three greats? Yes, three greats. Wow. Wow.
Now, you may have seen this a little earlier today, worth mentioning again, because 150 passengers travelling between England and France at speeds of up to 180 miles per hour. That's six times faster than conventional ferries. Well, that's the promise of the firm behind this, the Sea Glider. It's a new maritime transport project led by Brittany Ferries. The vehicle was revealed today in new concept images, and the fleet of battery-powered gliders are designed to ride on a cushion of air trapped between the vehicle and the water's surface, the so-called ground effect. Well, earlier, Nigel Wanacott, the head of external communications at Brittany Ferries, told GB News how they're going to work. When the craft first leaves port, the first thing it does is foil. So it starts, it starts to gather the seed. Its hull effectively lifts out of the water. And then at around 45 miles per hour, not if you like, um, it, it, it starts to ride on um, on the air cushion that's created between the wings uh, and the surface of the water. And this ground effect, as you rightly said, you know, it's, you know, it's well known in Formula One course, but also in you know, pilots, know, pilots know only too well when they're trying to land an aircraft. You know, they feel this ground effect as they're trying to land. It's the kind of resistance that's put between the wing and the ground that stops them from landing. So the, the thing is, if you can exploit that air cushion, you can actually move things, people or freight over long distances at very high speed with very little energy. And of course, the, the concept for this craft is it would be purely battery powered, no fossil fuel at all. Brilliant. I love that thing. Yeah. Honestly, he's saying it's like, you know, Formula One um, technology. Yep. Where, yeah, and you know I love my Formula I know you One. love you. And as a wannabe paraglider at the moment, I'm learning about all these things about air and gravity. And, well, obviously I have to learn a bit about gravity. <laughs> yeah, the program, because <laughs> I'm a bit busy at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Now, a rare orchid that vanished from the UK has been discovered on a rooftop in the city of London. Uh, the 15-strong colony of small-flowered tongue orchids was found growing on the green roof of the Japanese investment bank, Nomura. Serapius parviflora is generally found in the Mediterranean basin and along the Atlantic coast of France, Spain and Portugal. There was a colony in 1989 of the plant. It mysteriously appeared in Cornwall, but only to disappear again in 2009. This newly discovered orchid in London is the only known wild colony of the species in the UK, and no one knows how they got there. There you are. No, oh. that's nice. Thank you. Yeah. A ringy endorsement. <laughs> now, a rather plain brown house in Bristol, which is hiding a rather lovely secret. Martin Fitton has spent the past 10 years to build and maintain his beautiful multi-tiered Japanese garden. Here it is in the back of that house. The tranquil space has been carefully filled with Far East-inspired features, plants and flowers in time for the summer. It's a real labour of love. It even includes fish, a large number of koi carp collected over 25 years. There's a stunning tea house complete with a bridge going over a scenic pond along with a zen garden and a courtyard with a bamboo partition. Martin says it's not been cheap to have a garden like this. He estimates it's, he spent thousands of, on materials, potentially between six and eight thousands since 2017. But my word, look at that. Marvellous. Well, does he have a small flower tongue orchid though? No idea. <laughs> Thank you for this. We know where to get one. I think this should be on a single shot and I just get on with it. <laughs> but anyway, exactly a year on from the discovery that a cheap steroid drug prevented COVID deaths, researchers say they've found another life-saving therapy. You may have heard about this today in the news. It's expensive. It's a potent intravenous infusion of antibodies that effectively neutralizes the virus. And results from the recovery trial suggest it could help one in three of those in hospital with severe COVID. For every 100 patients treated, experts calculate it could save six lives. But, and there's always a but, only those who've not already made any antibodies of their own to fight the virus should be given the treatment. It costs between a thousand and two thousand pounds. But it's good news. It's yeah. another weapon in the fight against this horrible virus. Now, I'm arachnophobic, so I'm not going to look at this, but imagine waking up to find your garden looking like this. Thousands of spiders and their webs seen billowing over the grasslands. This is in Victoria in Australia. One word for this, yuck. But amazing pictures. That's grim. Now, uh, I just want to show you a tweet. Uh, let's show the pictures now, because it's a tweet from the... Uh, you know, I'm going to have to go right up to the screen to read this, because <laughs> my eyes it's are so enough. bad. Don't, don't fall no. over the set, Simon. Uh, but this is Digby. Um, look, look, this is from the Devon and Somerset Fire Brigade. And we were at an incident. Uh, police negotiators were speaking with a woman who was contemplating killing herself. One of the fire crews had the idea to bring Digby along. 
their diffusing dog. Uh, and when Digby arrived, the young woman immediately swung her head round to look at Digby and smiled. This got a conversation started about Digby and his role at the fire service. She was asked if she would like to come and meet Digby if she came back over the railings, which we are pleased to say they say she did. We wish the woman involved all the best in her recovery. Uh, now, a number of people texted me and uh, emailed me about this today, and I suspect this will be a story in tomorrow's papers. Um, Digby, we salute you. It, he, uh, we think he might be uh, a cockapoo. Not quite sure. He looks like a cockapoo. But uh, that was a tweet put out by the rescue service this morning. And there he is. Uh, and, and, and what a lovely story. And that's yeah. the sort of thing we want to hear. Um, we do. So... Thank you, all of you who got in touch today. Most of those stories coming from you, our viewers. And uh, we want to hear more about innovation, uh, any other businesses. I've, I've got a couple already for tomorrow's program. So. We want to know if you've renamed your pub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you've got mysterious orchids. Yeah, we, we like to put a smile on people's face as well as... I mean, I've, I've been crying because of, of the, the cat story, which... Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> get I don't understand why that sets you off so I do, much. it's just so funny. I, I, mean, I know, uh, I was going to say no cats were killed in the making of this, but they were. There was one dead I, on the M6. I did were. actually read a story not long ago about a guy who had thought he was burying his own cat and he'd buried the next door neighbours. Yeah. People need to start like studying their cats' faces a bit more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cat recognition course. Yeah, I, th I think that's a bit necessary at this point. <laughs>